I assume that you already know how to teach guitar, but you want to know how to teach guitar online. Well, I've developed a strategy that works extremely well at teaching online, and not only will you be able to teach more effectively, but these videos that you create will help attract more and more people to you. Not just people in your local area, but people who've never heard of you before all around the world that want to learn to play guitar, they're gonna to come to you and see you as their hero and want you to be their instructor. First, we're gonna talk about the strategy of teaching guitar online. Then we'll jump into how you can start your videos to grab people's attention right off the bat. Then I'll share how you can keep their attention throughout that video. Next, I'll share a strategy of how you can prepare your content and do it a lot quicker, do it a lot more efficiently. And then I'll wrap up with my strategy on how to get people to find your video so these become marketing machines for you. I make hundreds of educational videos every month on YouTube. This is my expertise and I help lots of other educators do the same. In fact, many of them are doing extremely well financially. Several of them are making six figures every month and we follow this exact strategy. Okay, so here's a summary of how this strategy works for you. I mean, right now, people are going online to Google and YouTube and they're typing in questions like, how to play blank on guitar. There, there are thousands of searches like this. Could you imagine having these people find you? That's actually exactly what's gonna happen, and it can happen really quick if you follow all the steps of my strategy. Ideally, you want a title that's really long, like eight words, nine words, sometimes even 10 words, okay? So they type in something that's eight words long, and then your video comes up because the title is exactly what they were searching for. So of course, they click on it, and you're teaching them what they want, so they watch the video all the way to the end. The YouTube algorithm sees that and says, wow, this is a valuable video. Let's suggest this video to more and more people who want to learn guitar. So these videos help you teach, but they also help you to market. Now let's look at it from the experience of the viewer or the student, okay? They want to learn how to play guitar. Maybe they start with a specific song, but they find you, and you really give them value, and because they spend time with you, during this video, they start to build a relationship and they probably watch another video to learn a different song. Then they find out that you've got a website and that you offer services and online teaching and that's when they reach out because they want to hire you. The next part of this video is the part that I really need you to pay attention because if you're gonna take away one thing, this is it. Look at this page, it's called the Keyword Magic Tool and the website we're on is semrush.com. There's a whole bunch of tools this is the only one that I use. And if you use this tool before you film your episodes, it'll make all the difference in making sure that your videos are already marketing machines. They will start to market themselves and they will get views as opposed to making an awesome video that you put on YouTube and it doesn't get any views. Okay, you want your videos to be seen. So watch this. If I type in play guitar and hit search, we get a lot of results, but I'm gonna turn on another amazing feature. I always press this button, questions. And then I also like to turn on this advanced filter. I come over here to word count, and I'm gonna turn it up to eight and hit apply. So all I see now are questions that are eight words or more about playing guitar. So we see phrases like how to play Stairway to Heaven on guitar, or how to play Sweet Home Alabama on guitar, how to learn to play guitar by yourself, how to play Hey There Delilah on guitar, even Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So there's obviously a lot of different questions. You could basically fill in the blank. If there's a song that you want to teach, you could probably put that title up above and see how many searches it's getting per month. As long as it's above 10, I say go for it. High volume typically means high competition. As long as there's at least a little trickle of a volume, that little trickle will find your video and they'll watch it all the way to the end because it's exactly what they're searching for. Well, the YouTube algorithm sees that and thinks, wow, this is a valuable video, so let's suggest this video to more and more people. And so your video will get more and more views over time. So what I'd like to do, I'm gonna scroll down and see, oh wow, this is a big opportunity. We got to the bottom of the page and still we're over 100 views. What if I go out to the next page? Okay, well, we're still 90 and above. Okay, what if I go out to like page seven? Okay, so this is, this is a real big opportunity. You've got a gold mine here. If you're wanting to teach guitar lessons online and, and build an audience, there are thousands and thousands of searches being done. 
you know, how to play Happy by the Rolling Stones on guitar. That's really specific. How to play Havana on guitar for beginners. All right, so I'm keep looking. I wanna, I wanna get down into, you know, 10 or 20 range. Let's go up to page 25. Who knows if I'm, well, we still have 30 and above. Let me pick one more title and explain it. Okay, so if we take this one here, a song called Freedom Is Here. So somebody goes to YouTube, they type in how to play Freedom Is Here on guitar. They see your video, it's got that exact title, so they click on it, they watch it all the way to the end. In fact, they might watch it a time or two because they really wanna learn how to play this song. The YouTube algorithm sees that and says, well, this is a valuable video. We're gonna make sure this video gets seen by more and more people. So you don't need a huge number right here. You just need to get the YouTube algorithm's attention and then YouTube will start to promote you more and more. Now, hold on just a minute. I just noticed that you haven't subscribed yet. So there's a red button. Go ahead and click that red button and subscribe to this channel. And then right next to it, there's a bell. Click that button as well. That turns on alerts so that each time I upload a new episode, you'll get an email from YouTube and you won't miss a thing. Once I have the titles selected, the list of videos that I wanna film and I'm ready to prepare the content, I use the same outline every time. This is what the outline looks like. I've got my title. I can make notes about my intro if there's anything I wanna say specifically in the intro. I remind myself to give content hooks. Then I have several bullet points where I can just put the talking points of things that I wanna talk about throughout the video. What I wanna talk about first, second, third, you know, I might end with a story, and then I always have a very specific call to action, whether I'm recommending the video that they should watch next, or the lead magnet, the free gift that they can get by clicking the link below. Now, we already talked about your titles. Remember, this is probably an eight or a nine word phrase. That's what your title is. In your intro, you're basically reading the title to them and then telling them why it's important. So, hey, in this video, we're gonna talk about this long sentence. I've been doing this for years, or this is really gonna change your life. Right, so something profound, something that's a why of why they need to watch this 10 minute episode. We're gonna talk about the content hooks in a minute because we need to have the content prepared first. One way that you can think about it is in time. Like I'm gonna spend a minute here, then I'm gonna spend a minute here, I'm gonna share a story, maybe that's two minutes, I've got another minute here, and I've got another minute here. You'll know the time as you go along. Now, when you prepare it this way, you don't want to memorize it and on filming day, try and remember all bullet points because guess what? You can pause. I'm pausing a whole bunch while recording this video, but I know that my editors will just edit out those pauses. And what I have all my clients do is they do point number one. They look at their notes and then they come and they look into the camera and they deliver point number one. They might talk for one minute, 90 seconds, maybe two minutes, and then they finish point number one. Then they come back, they look at their notes. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna talk about next. Then they come back to the camera and they deliver point number two. They're not thinking about what point number three is. In fact, we want them to intentionally pause after they're done talking about point number two. They come back to their notes, they look at point number three and they say, oh yeah, that's what I was gonna talk about next. They look at the lens of the camera and they deliver point three. This is the best way to prepare your content because one, it's simple. You're not writing out a lengthy script that might take you a couple of hours to prepare for one video. Now you can just bullet point the talking points in maybe five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, and that episode is prepared. And you can take the burden off your shoulders of having to memorize all this content because you've just got memory joggers. I'm gonna talk about this first, then I'm gonna talk about this second, and you're gonna pause between each one. How do you start an episode? Okay, what do you do right at the very beginning? Well, there's two things that you wanna do. You wanna tell them what the video's about and why they should watch this video. Okay, so I'll demonstrate. One of the titles we found was How to Play Stairway to Heaven on Guitar. So if I were the guitar instructor, this is how I might start the episode. Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to play Stairway to Heaven on guitar. This is a favorite. This is a really fun one to learn. And because I've taught it so many times, I've learned some tips that will help you pick it up faster. So let's dive right in. So do you see what I did there? I said the what, what it's about. Okay, you're gonna learn this song and the why, because I'm experienced. Another title I found was how to play Silent Night on classical guitar. So if I were starting that episode, it might sound like this. 
Hey, welcome back. In this episode, I'm gonna teach you how to play Silent Night on classical guitar. This is such a good one to learn if you love classical guitar. The chords and the fingering, oh, it's just, I love this one, so I'm excited to teach it to you. After you've done your intro and the little opener has played, your little branding piece that's six or eight seconds long, then comes the content, and you wanna start out your content with content hooks. So I wanna demonstrate how not to do it, and then a better way to do it. So on the outline here, I'm gonna just demonstrate with this title, how to get rid of strep throat without antibiotics. Now Doreen Spackman, she's the expert on this topic. She taught it to me. I've used the remedy many times, so I'm gonna pretend that that's my expertise, okay? And here's my outline. You notice I've got three words or one word or two words, okay? Very simple outline. I've got six different points that I'm gonna cover in the video. First, let me demonstrate how not to do the content hooks. All right, as we dive into this topic of how to get rid of strep throat without antibiotics, really you just need three ingredients. If you go grab some garlic, some cayenne pepper, and some raw honey, and you mix that together, you take that, it will wipe out your strep throat. I just gave away the whole episode, right? Why are people gonna need to watch longer? Or maybe they don't believe me. Maybe they think, oh, that sounds too good to be true. Let me go find a better video. Or maybe they do believe me and they go leave to see if they have those ingredients in their kitchen. Who knows, but they're certainly not gonna stick around for the full episode. So here is a second attempt and I'm gonna set some content hooks that create curiosity. All right, as we dive into this topic of how to get rid of strep throat without antibiotics, First, we're gonna talk about why not antibiotics. And there's some good reasons why you might wanna consider an alternative. Then there are three ingredients. We're gonna talk about each one and how each one is a natural antibacterial and a natural antiviral. It's amazing stuff. Then we're gonna to go to the kitchen. I'm gonna show you how to prepare this and how to take it, dosage and whatnot. And then I'm gonna wrap up with a story. My son, when he was really young, he had a high fever, he had strep throat, and we use this remedy. He also experienced a side effect that you're gonna to wanna to know about because you're probably gonna experience this side effect as well. All right, let's dive in. Okay, do you see what I did there? Do you see the difference in the first example and the second one? Hopefully you see how the second one really would create a lot of curiosity and didn't give away the secrets. The whole goal is to create curiosity and help them think, wow, this is an amazing video. I'm excited to spend the next 10 or 12 minutes watching this episode. Now let's talk about the end of the video. You wanna have a call to action if you want your channel to be profitable, right? If you wanna make revenue or you wanna have customers or clients, you need to ask them to do something. But it's actually easier than you might think. You don't have to sell them anything at this video, which, which would kind of be weird when it's an educational video, right? You're giving away information for free and then at the end you're trying to sell them something. No, nope, we don't have to worry about that. Give them a free gift. Okay, so you might say something like this. Hey, now that you've learned how to do A, B, and C, I wanna give you a free copy of my book. I go way more in depth on this topic, and if you click the link below and you discover the shipping costs, I'll send you the book for free. That type of a call to action or that type of a lead magnet, the gift that you give away is called a lead magnet because it attracts leads. That can be really effective because in order for them to pay the shipping costs, they need to give you their name, their phone number, their address, their email, and they're paying a few dollars so you know that they're committed. So it's a high quality lead and you get a lot more of their contact information. As a heads up, the lead magnet that I'm gonna give away to you for watching this episode is my Influencer Almanac. It's a digital piece that has a lot of valuable information in there, but there's no cost at all. You just get it for free because I don't have to ship it out to you. I can just email you the link. Another thing that I wanna talk about about call to action is engagement. You can ask people to do things like, hey, remember to subscribe. Did you notice how I asked you to subscribe earlier in the episode? I was over there sitting on the stairs. Most people who wait to the end of the video and their call to action is that, but what that does is it tells people to leave. It says, you know what? I'm all done. You can be all done with YouTube. See you later. See you tomorrow. You actually don't want to give any signals like that. So at the end of your videos, you either have a call to action to a lead magnet where if they are going to leave, they're going to your website or you have a call to action that leads them to the next video that you recommend that they watch. So you might say something like this. Hey, now that you've learned A, B, and C in this video, if you wanna learn X, Y, and Z, go watch this video next. You can point to it, you can tell them the title of the video, but that way they're not ending their YouTube session, they're actually continuing and going and watching another video that you recommend to them. I typically will recommend that we do five episodes that link to a lead magnet. So the call to action is to go to a lead magnet, the other 15 
would link to those five videos. So it'd be, hey, if you've learned A, B, and C, you need to go watch this video next to learn X, Y, and Z. And then at that video, the call to action is the lead magnet. Now that you have an understanding of what's possible leveraging YouTube and how you could really teach guitar online, I wanna help you further and I've got a free gift for you. It's my influencer almanac, okay? What this is, it's an online resource where I've put all my tips, all my tools, and of course, all my strategies. You've gotten a glimpse of one of my strategies here. To get access to it right now, just go ahead and click the link below.